Here in the Mjolnir Parken district of Copenhagen, this building site is a source of controversy for local residents. The city council has recently decided to take action against communities of foreigners that it sees as closed off from the wider Danish populace. Half of all the social housing here is to be sold off to the private sector, with residents evicted and rehoused elsewhere. Mohamed Aslam, a local businessman, has lived here in Mjolnir Parken for over 40 years and doesn't understand this new move against his community. We didn't do anything. We're not criminals. Why should we be thrown out of our homes? My four children were born and grew up here in Mjölnir Parken. They got a good education and now have jobs. Why should we be put in the bad category of the population? This new anti-ghetto plan further intensifies the anti-immigrant policies of previous governments. Seizing of valuables upon arrival in the country, restricted access to benefits, deportation of those who break the law, seemingly all in order to discourage immigrants from coming to or staying in Denmark. Meskan arrived from Iran a year ago. In order to obtain a work permit, she has to pass an examination that goes well beyond verifying her professional qualifications as a doctor. The test also covers topics such as Danish history and society. There are certain rules for immigrants here. We have to speak Danish perfectly. We can tell a dance perfect. Refugee supporting organizations are worried about the move. We have some terrible examples with especially young people who are refugees, but they're doing extremely well in Denmark and have Danish friends and speak Danish, etc., etc. And they're just being kicked out, which I think is completely stupid. Complete waste and also very inhumane. Denmark has negotiated an opt-out from certain European Union rules, getting greater flexibility for its migration policy. As a result, between 2015 and 2022, the number of asylum seekers has fallen by nearly 80% in the country. The left-leaning political parties that have taken these measures justified the policy by claiming that they were acting to defend their Scandinavian social model. When we talk about integration and how we can make it work, can we get people out in the labour market, get their kids in, in school, can they learn the language, understand the Danish culture, be a part of the civil society, numbers matters, and if we have too many coming in, in a short time, then it's, it's really difficult to make the integration work. This hardline anti-immigrant policy has been politically successful for the centre-left Social Democrats. In last year's parliamentary elections, they received their largest vote share for 20 years. So if everybody wants to come to Denmark, then there's not enough money for, for all of us. So I don't think they're too strict. Yeah. If you come from a war-struck war place, of course you have to come here, because uh, you're going to get killed at home. But uh, people who do it for financial gains, I don't think those people should get in. But according to local NGOs, even more restrictive policies around asylum are not needed. 35,000 Ukrainians uh, have come here the last year and it has been uh, a very well uh, process and uh, the welfare state has been uh, good. Denmark's migration policy is being closely watched here in France and across the continent with France's left criticising it and the right lauding the move, Denmark's new style of migration politics has already made its mark on the debate. In an era of rising support for the anti-immigrant far right, other European left-wing parties may need to look seriously at Denmark's social democrat policies if they want to continue to hold the far right at bay.